our previous video that the two fund separation theorem implies that investors are going to hold a portfolio composed of two sub parts. One is the risk free rate or the risk free investment, and another one is what we call the tangency portfolio. When all investors follow such uh, strategies, uh, there is an important result that we have illustrated in the previous video, which is that the tangency portfolio is actually the market portfolio. So the market, the relative weight of each stock in the total market uh, capitalization uh, corresponds exactly to the portfolio weight of the tangency portfolio. This is depicted in this uh, graph where um, the tangency point between the green line and the red line is the market uh, portfolio. Now we would like to see whether this has some implication uh, in terms of uh, market equilibrium for the link between risk and return. For a given level of risk, what do we expect a particular financial asset or a particular financial portfolio, what do we expect the expected uh, level of return uh, to be? To do that, to uh, create this link between risk and return, we start from the results of the two fund separation theorem. Okay? So the tangency portfolio is the market portfolio. So the coordinate of that point, the coordinate of this uh, market point, are the expected return on the market and the risk of the market. So for example, we could consider that a stock index like the S&P 500 is a good representation of what the market actually is. From that observation, we can say something about the red line, the characteristic of the red line. Like any uh, affine function straight line, it is characterized by its intercept where it starts, and here it starts at the level of the risk-free rate. And the second element that characterizes the equation of a line is the slope. The slope here is measured by how much you move up when you move to the right, how much additional return you get by taking additional level of risk. And for the red line, the efficient frontier, we can use the coordinate of the market portfolio to completely describe the slope of uh, the red line. The slope is going to be defined by the difference between the expected return on the market and the risk-free rate. This is the height of the point along the y-axis of the market point minus the height of the risk-free rate. So here it will be a little bit more than 6% minus the 2% of the risk-free rate. And if we look now at how much you move to the right when moving along the red line, the horizontal uh, movement uh, for the market coordinate is 10% to the right minus the level of the origin which is 0% for the risk-free rate. So the slope is 6% minus 2% divided by 10%. This is the slope of the red line. Now, any portfolio which is on the red line can be identified by the intercept, the origin, the risk-free rate, the level of risk it is exposed to, and the slope of the red line. This relation between the expected return of an efficient portfolio and its level of risk is called the capital market line. And it's just a reinterpretation of the efficient frontier, including the risk-free rate. I'm going to display now the equation of this, um, of this capital market line. And this is precisely what we've just said, right? The expected return here of one particular efficient portfolio, which we write E for expectation, of RI, the return of one particular efficient portfolio, so one portfolio on the red line, satisfies the equation of the straight line. This straight line starts at the risk-free rate, which we write here RF. And then there is a level of risk for that portfolio, which is sigma i, which multiplies the slope of the red line. How is the slope of the red line defined? It is defined relative to the coordinate of the market portfolio. So we have expected return on the market portfolio minus RF. This is E square bracket RM, expected return of the market, hence the M, divided by the level of risk of the market, sigma M. So this ratio here, E of RM minus RF divided by sigma M, this is the slope of the red line. This equation links risk and return, but not for all assets in the market. 
It links risk and return only for those portfolio that are optimally diversified and are on this red line.